Okay guys, we're gonna do a general walkthrough of the three kilowatt, 48 volt, 120 volt AC output, basic LVM, grow watt, three kilowatt stackable inverter. Uh, just some general parameters you guys need to make sure that you're operating in for your project, you're planning with them. Uh, I think on the physical side, you need to make sure that the inverter is mounted on a non-flammable surface. So don't mount them on a sheet of plywood or particle board if you want to be in compliance with the recommended specs. Uh, hardy backer, steel framing, something that is non-flammable is really what is being called for in these scenarios for your safety. Uh, on the battery side, uh, you're going to need a large battery cable. It's not, no, you can't just use any size. The two gauge battery cable is recommended as a minimum for this inverter in order to provide enough amps to run continuous loads and provide for surges. So use at least a two gauge battery cable. On the solar side, which is going to feed right in these PV inputs, the maximum amount of wattage you can use is 4,500. So you want to try to keep your array for the solar panels under 4,500 watts. Uh, also going with that, the minimum input voltage to charge a battery. Uh, if you don't achieve a minimum input voltage, you will not be able to use this solar charger. We're feeding a 48 volt battery. So obviously you have to have 60 volts minimum MPP, which is going to come out to at least 80 volts open circuit. So if you set it under that voltage, you don't build strings that are high enough voltage, you won't have the voltage necessary to charge your batteries reliably. You can put as much wattage as you want at the wrong voltage, it won't, it will not work out very well. On the operating environment temperature, you have to think about the places you're putting this inverter. The minimum Fahrenheit that you need to operate on is 32 degrees. You can't run this in a room that's gonna get below freezing. We don't want moisture to condense in the relays and ice up the control electronics. It's not going to work very well. Uh, maximum temperature, again, this thing is going to make heat. You need at least a uh, cap of 131 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can't put this in the hottest shack out in the open sun in Nevada. That's not going to work either. You want to keep the temperature under 131. That's really, I think, something that I would try to also say Give it a little safety factor there. Uh, but definitely 131 is our limit. Um, and we're going to move on to the AC input amperage and wire size because that's one of the things people like about these inverts. They have a, a charger where they'll charge from air, AC input current as well. But you have to keep a few things in mind. Um, the maximum charger load wattage if this inverter is putting out its maximum load, which you can set, you can set a little further down, but it, the maximum load that it'll put out to charge batteries is 2,500 watts AC input. It's not perfect efficiency. You won't get 2,500 watts out. Uh, but this is the math you need to think about. The full inverter capacity, 3,000 watts, must be added to that charger load because the inverter is not inverting while it's charging. So if you have an AC input source, you're liable for the maximum amount of loads that you had in your house, plus that charger wattage. So you need to size your AC input for the sum of those two, which would be 2,500 watts plus 3,000 watts, 5,500 watts. Now remember, that's at 120 volts AC. So if you do the math there, we're around 45 amps input which means you really need a minimum of eight gauge wire being fed by a 50 amp breaker. Uh, when you move to generator sizing, if you wanna use a generator as an AC input source, uh, we're gonna start with that same total load factor we just talked about, 5,500 watts. And now we have to build in a generator oversize factor of 50% because you should never fully load a generator while you're doing an electronics process. The, the, the voltage will start to collapse. Generators, in theory, can provide that max amount of wattage, but not for complex electronic processes. So let's do that math. You're gonna need 8,500 watts of generator capacity at 120 volts. If you have a generator that's 240 volts, that doesn't count. You can only get half of that at 120. So make sure you can pull 50 amps of 120 out of your generator max so that way you've got a big enough generator. 
Okay, if you're gonna stack multiple inverters, everyone likes the idea that you can stack multiple inverters. If you wanna use a generator to charge a stack of two, you can't just power one at a time. You can't say I have a 9,000 watt generator, I'll just power one. If you're gonna use an AC input source, these inverters have to have a common AC input source. Therefore, you need a generator that is twice as powerful to run two of these inverters at the same time. Of course, if you put them in 240 volt configuration, then it'll be 9,000 watts on either 120 volt leg. Uh, you know, given that most people don't have significantly sized generators and people are tending to use these in stacks, we tend to find that the best strategy if you're trying to have a simple battery charging system is to use a generator with a, with a dedicated DC battery charger like we sell as a separate unit. Unless you really have a generator that's truly big enough, you will not be doing yourself any favors by putting too small of a generator on this inverter. It's going to hurt the electronics that you run in your house because that generator voltage will be under strain. You will have appliances break down. You will have the inverter break down faster. And that is obviously not a good idea. Okay, y'all, one other important thing to remember with the inverter is the power switch procedure. You have to keep the power switch off when you're working with your batteries. You do not ever want to be in a situation where the power switch is left on and you apply new DC voltage because you've just repowered your batteries, turned the batteries back on, whatever you use to control your batteries. If you apply live DC voltage, to an inverter with an on switch that is turned on, you're going to surge a massive amount of DC amperage into the inverter and will very likely, in most cases, destroy a lot of control electronics inside of there. It's a very quick and easy way to destroy your inverter. It's something that we're gonna be able to see when we review it uh, for any kind of warranty claims. Just let's all work together and make sure that we keep that switch off when we're working with our batteries wait till we see the voltage we want on the bus bars, and then turn the switch on. Take this process a little slowly and make sure you're doing it right and nothing gets broken. So that's really the general parameters that you need to think about when you're designing a system around this inverter. Thanks for watching.